Hells Angels. Zadashti allegedly hired Canadian Hells Angels member the Hells Angels. Hells Angels, the Hells Angels. Are members of the Hells Angels. Several people tied to the Hells Angels. And have ties to the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Four missing Hells Angels, Fresno Hells Angel, and problems for other Hells Angels. In today's tech-obsessed world, we are all glued to our smartphones. We are missing out on real-life connections. Less chatting face-to-face -face means fewer chances to really connect. For the past half century, people have been searching for a place to belong. Some find it in something as useless as anime clubs. While some find it in a higher purpose in life. However, most folks tend to find something that floats their boat. But I have a question. What about those who feel like society's left them out? This concept was very well discussed in one of my favorite movies, Fight Club. God damn it, an entire generation pumping gas, waiting tables, slaves with white collars. Advertising has us chasing cars and clothes, working jobs we hate so we can buy shit we don't need. The middle children of history, man. No purpose or place. We have no great war, no great depression. Our great war is a spiritual war. Our great depression is our lives. raised on television to believe that one day we'd all be millionaires and movie gods and rock stars, but we won't. We're slowly learning that fact. We're very, very pissed off. Well, there's a real-life version to such men. Outlaw biker gangs. You know the type, the tough-looking dudes with the beards, tats, leather jackets. And among them, you've definitely heard of the Hells Angels. I read this headline the other day and I immediately wanted to make a documentary on Hells Angels. And here we are. Picture the world of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club where the thunderous roar of Harley Davidson engines announces their presence long before you catch sight of their unmistakable insignia. They're not just a club. They are a force to be reckoned with. Incorporated as the Hells Angel Motorcycle Corporation in the United States and Canada, they're known by a myriad of nicknames like HA, Red and White, HAMC, and the iconic 81. With over 6,000 members and a staggering 467 chapters scattered across 59 countries, they stand tall as the unrivaled king of the outlaw motorcycle world. Now let's rewind a little bit. Now to growing concerns about the deadly coronavirus officially hitting the U.S. 1.7% here, a loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5% generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We read everywhere essentially, down by 4 or 5%. We're down over 16%. Dow at the same time has fallen about 18%. fellow citizens, our way of life, our very freedom came under attack in a series of deliberate and deadly terrorist acts. Like many young Californians, Stephen Jobs has a penchant for the western casual and the love of the scenic outdoors. And in the Silicon Valley, Jobs is a classic example of the computer industry's philosophy, which says, take a chance, you've got nothing to lose. And using tiny silicon chips, built this small computer board. It became the technical core of the Apple computer. Okay. You wanna play rough? Okay. No. Say hello to my little friend! Just hovered in the Air Force for 12 years. 
and you served, I believe, for two years in Vietnam. When and why did you decide that the country was wrong to fight for? Du, meine Arbeit für richtig hältst. Ob du glaubst, dass ich fleißig gewesen bin, dass ich gearbeitet habe, dass ich mich in diesen Jahren für dich eingesetzt habe. The origins of the Hells Angels date back to March 17, 1948 in Fontana, California when multiple small motorcycle clubs merged. Otto Fridley, a World War II veteran, is attributed with founding the club after departing from the Pissed Off Bastards Motorcycle Club due to a feud with a rival gang. However, an alternate narrative suggests that Hell's Angels were established on November 15, 1951 in San Bernardino by Dick White, a member of the Redlands Roadrunners. While some aspects of the history of 81 remains ambiguous and extremely mysterious to the outside world with varying accounts of their origin, reports indicate that the club's first official charter was drafted in Montana around 1950. Over the subsequent decade, numerous autonomous chapters of the Hells Angels sprang up across California as members migrated from one city to another. The Hells Angels, much like the legendary James Younger gang of the 19th century, are often romanticized in semi-mythical tales, portrayed as free-spirited icons bound together by unwavering brotherhood and loyalty. Yet, their depiction isn't always rosy. Films like the 1966 Roger Corman classic The Wild Angels paint them as a violent and nihilistic mere outlaws wrecking havoc on society. In 1973, Hell's Angels members from various chapters made headlines by protesting at an Environmental Protection Agency hearing. Their gripe? A proposed transportation plan that threatened to curb motorcycle usage and sales in a bit to meet new Clean Air Act standards. The Hells Angels sport a patch system akin to military medals, each emblem shrouded in mystery, representing specific deeds or beliefs of its wearer. For instance, the infamous 8 and 1 patches signify the positions of H and A in the alphabet. Among their numerous patches, one named De Gueo, and I really hope I'm pronouncing that right, pays homage to El De Gueo, bugle call from the Battle of the Alamo, symbolizing defiance against law enforcement. Their slogans echo their enigmatic aura. When we do right, nobody remembers. When we do wrong, nobody forgets. And who can forget the legendary saying, when in doubt, knock him out. A motto coined by Vincent Bigwini, a member of the New York City chapter. In March 2007, the Hells Angels took legal action against the Walt Disney Motion Pictures Group, alleging unauthorized use of the HAMC name and the distinctive logo in the film Wild Hawks. The club claimed that Disney had used their trademark without permission. However, the suit was eventually dropped after Disney assured the Angels that the references would be removed from the movie. As of December 2013, the Hells Angels began selling branded merchandise at a retail store located in Toronto, Ontario. This move marked the shift in the club's approach to commercializing their brand. To earn the coveted status of a member, aspiring candidates must meet specific criteria. They must possess a valid driver's license and own a motorcycle with an engine capacity of over 750 cc. However, beyond these tangible requirements, potential prospects must also demonstrate the right combination of personal qualities. Notably, the club actively excludes individuals with a history of child molestation, applicants to law enforcement, and those who engage in intravenous drug use. The journey towards full membership in the Hells Angels is a meticulously structured process spanning multiple phases. Initially, a prospective member is designated as a hangaround, granting them limited access to club events and interactions with members. 
If the individual expresses continued interest, they may progress to the status of an associate, a probationary phase lasting approximately one to three years. During this period, associates participate in club activities but lack voting rights. Subsequently, successful associates are promoted to prospect status where they undergo further evaluation for suitability as full members. Only upon unanimous confirmation by existing full members can a prospect attain the highest membership status full patch. The symbolic culmination of this journey is the awarding of the full four-piece insignia including the iconic Death Head logo, rockers displaying the club's name and territory, the MC patch. Prospects, however, are restricted to wearing a bottom rocker and the MC patch until they achieve full membership. Even after attaining full membership, Hells Angels members are reminded of their allegiance to the club. Members must fulfill financial obligations by paying dues, attend mandatory club meetings and motorcycle runs, and actively participate in chapter meetings. Colloquially, refer church, financing club activities, motorcycle runs, funerals, and the travel expenses of club officers to state and national meetings. Some members may become exempt from paying dues after a certain tenure within the club. Even though the Hells Angels officially do not endorse racial segregation within its organization, however, there have been reported requirements that candidates be white males. Sonny Barger, a prominent member, acknowledged in a 2000 BBC interview that while the club as a whole is not racist, there are likely enough racist members to prevent black individuals from joining. At that time, there were black members in the club. Nevertheless, there have been instances of non-white individuals becoming members in the United States. Hunter S. Thompson noted the presence of a Chinese member and a young black member in 1967. In Cleveland, a Chinese-American member named Stephen Wayne Yi was convicted of murder. Additionally, a black member was part of the Satan's Angels MC in Vancouver when it merged with the Hells Angels in 1983. However, tensions arose among certain chapters when it was discovered, eventually resolved when the individual changed his nationality to Hawaiian. Unsanctioned Hells Angels chapter was granted official status in 1985, shortly after its only black member, John Mickelson, died in police custody. Furthermore, Gregory Woolley, an associate of the Hells Angels Montreal Charter was a high-ranking member of the Rockers MC in Montreal and attempted to unite Streets Gang in Quebec. In another interview, Barger remarked that the Hells Angels were predominantly white while black individuals tended to join other motorcycle clubs like the Dragons. However, he acknowledged that such affiliations could change over time. Despite potential racial tensions, there have been instances of cooperation and friendship between the Hells Angels and other motorcycle clubs, including those comprised of black members. In a 1966 Ebony article, members of the Chosen Few Motorcycle Club stated that they did not perceive racial animosity from the Hells Angels. Likewise, a Hells Angels member interviewed for the article denied racial prejudice within their clubs, stating that while there were no black members, none had sought membership. Additionally, in the 1970s, the Hells Angels attempted to consolidate various motorcycle clubs by offering every member of the chosen few a Hells Angels patch, an offer that was declined. Europe became a significant home for the Hells Angels in 1969 with the formation of two London charters. Interestingly, in 1968, members from the HAMC 
San Francisco were invited by George Harrison of the Beatles to stay at Apple Records in London. Although only two members made the trip, they ultimately paved the way for the establishment of Hells Angels chapters in London. The London Hells Angels gained prominence by providing security at various UK underground festivals such as Fun City in 1970. Notably, Mick Farron, an organizer of Fun City, was awarded an approval patch by the London Angels for his first solo album, which featured Steve Peregrine. In 1977, the Hells Angels expanded into Canada. This marked the beginning of a significant expansion across the rest of Canada during the 1980s and 90s. However, the club's presence in Canada was marked by Quebec Biker War, a violent turf war that erupted in 1994 and continued until late 2002. Fueled by the Hells Angels attempts to monopolize street level drug sales in Quebec, the conflict resulted in numerous bombings, murders and casualties on both sides, leaving a devastating impact on the region. Additionally, members of the Hells Angels Spanish Charter were involved in a killing and faced legal proceedings. The Hells Angels often finds itself under the watchful eye of various law enforcement agencies across the globe. Being classified as one of the big four motorcycle gangs in the United States along the Pagans, the Outlaws and the Bandidos. Members of the Hells Angels still insist that they're just a group of motorcycle enthusiasts who have come together to enjoy riding motorcycles and organizing social events such as road trips, fundraisers, parties and motorcycle rallies. They maintain that any criminal activities are the responsibility of individuals who carry them out, rather than reflective of the club as a whole. In May 2019, a landmark verdict in Netherlands saw the country become the first to completely ban the Hells Angels. The presiding judge deemed the club a danger to public order and the rule of law. While other countries like Germany had previously banned local chapters, this ruling marked the first time an entire country had outlawed the club. In conclusion, the Hells Angels stand as a polarizing figure in the world of motorcycle culture. Its legacy woven with both admiration and apprehension. Through decades of existence, the club has traversed the landscape of notoriety and reverence leaving an indelible mark on the fabric of society. While controversies and allegations of criminality have shadowed the club, there are moments of unexpected compassion and solidarity. And for outlaw biker gangs, there have been moments where you can see their compassion and solidarity with the society around them. In times of crisis, such as the New Zealand terror attacks on Muslims, reports emerged of local biker gangs distinct from Hell's Angels, standing guard outside mosques offering protection to vulnerable communities.